<coughs> Hello everyone. I'm hoping that this works. I have no experience live streaming, especially in my new setup. I've done on the phone, as you know, but um, I actually don't know if it's going to be working properly. <laughs> um, so let me know if you can hear me. Um, I'll ask um, as I as I progress and as more people join. And I don't know if um, many people will join because I didn't give that much notice. It was a very spontaneous thing. I know that um, I was uh, a little nervous in doing so. And um, but we shall see. So, but um, with YouTube, um, after the video I finish, it will um, it will go into the um, playlist as well, so you can watch this later. You definitely don't have to um, like if you you know miss it, it's okay, it's fine, absolutely fine. Right, so I'm just giving the live water a quick stir, and um, I will um, obviously try my best to look at the screen as well when people if they message. Um, be sure to um, let me know if everyone can hear. So whoever, I know there's a few people on, just let me know if you can hear right in the chat section. When I did the test before, it said everything was fine, so hopefully... And I think there might be um, 30 second delay. So I'll just wait like, you know, 20, 30 seconds. Hey, George, can you hear you loud and clear? Hope you've had a great day. Oh, hello, Cass. How are you going? Thanks so much for joining. Um, I, I just um, remembered your name now, Your because I forgot a couple of times. I'm like, who's this comeback Arabella? But I remember the convo. My memory's still there. Okay, thanks so much, Cass. Thank you very much. Um, and if you can't hear me, uh, if something happens later, I'll be sure to let me know. Right, <clears throat> so as you've seen, I'm going to be making, uh, I make private label soaps for my local cafe, and I've had to shake things up a little in terms of what carrier oils I use because um, olive oil, coconut oil, everything has just gone up. It's skyrocketed in price. So I'm having to use actual palm oil now and a Spanish olive oil for this particular private label um, just to keep the cost down. You know, like I don't expect people at my local cafe to spend, you know, $10 on a bar of soap. Um, so we chat, me and Tom, the owner of the cafe, and he said he's more than happy for me to use whatever necessary. And I'm like, that's great. So I will be using, this is from Aussie, Can Aussie Candle Supplies. Um, and of course, the full uh, recipes are down in the description below. And uh, this is the green tea fragrance oil. It smells really nice. I still haven't got my um, smell back 100% because I recently had um, CV19, as you probably know. Oh, well, I hope this soap making video cheers you up, Cass. <laughs> oh gosh, because I watched a lot of it when I was sick. Um, anyway, back to, I've got a one track mind. I'm very bad at multitasking. So um, this is the green tea fragrance oil in here. I've got white Australian kale and clay, of course, and a bit of green blue mica. I've got this from Aussie Candle Supplies. I'm not too keen on Aussie Sandal. Aussie candle supplies micas. I find that they do bleed a little bit. Like they're very sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So I haven't really pinpointed why it's doing that. And um, that's the green tea, and then the, obviously the second batch because I'm making two batches, and those are the two light pots and the two oil pots. And of course, white clay for the other one with a bit of bronze mica because this is going to be a chai uh, fragrance oil. And it actually does smell like chai latte. It's actually really nice. And of course, because it's a cafe, so why not? Chai, you see me make the coffee soap a couple of weeks ago. I did a video on that. Green tea, chai latte, you know, we're going all out now. So it's excellent. Right. 
So before I add the lye water, I just want to, because I'm not doing multicolors, because I don't know how these are going to perform. I don't know if it's going to accelerate trays or anything like that. So I always add the colors first. If it's just a single color, then I'll, I'll add it straight to the oil phase and I'll give it a nice stir also. So I don't forget. I've got some titanium dioxide here dispersed in distilled water. I'm just going to put a tablespoon of that in because of the olive oil to keep it light. And if this was a pure coconut oil soap, that would stay that pretty much that color if it's going to be a white um, soap. But um, I know that it will discolor a little bit. I don't know how much. This is the first time actually using this particular mica. So we shall see how it turns out. So I'll just scrape everything to make sure everything's incorporated. I'm going to go ahead and have the lye. So the lye is 20 degrees Celsius and my oils, just so I'm not a liar, are 31, which is totally fine. 31 as well, perfect. I like to soap above 30 degrees. Um, as you've seen, if you see me making my coffee soap, um, it went a little hard on me <laughs> because it fell below 30 and palm oil, I think, has a higher melting point than coconut oil. Um, so in the lye water, the usual sugar, salt, sodium lactate and citric acid. That's the usual. That's just what I use in all my recipes. Um, and I've got a video on citric acid if you want uh, more information on that. And of course, I've got some tech tutorial videos on the benefits of adding salt and sugar as well. Um, but um, they all play a role in longevity, um, creating uh, a longer lasting bar. So I'm going to um, blend this. So I won't talk when I'm blending because you probably won't be able to hear me. So I'll add the green tea fragrance oil. Hopefully this behaves itself. I didn't see any reviews on how it behaves itself, so we shall see. I'm very used to working on my toes anyway, so <laughs> if it misbehaves, that's okay. Oh, I can smell it a little bit. It's actually quite nice. I hope it actually stays this green. I don't think it will, but this green is actually really nice. So I'm not doing any multi-colors, so I'm just going to leave it for one color. I'll give it a good stir and blend. I do use steep water discounts, so I mean it is it's at a light trace now, it didn't take much. Of course, it's 60% hard oils in this recipe, and having a low water content, um, as you see in all my videos, I um I like to use a um a very, very steep water discount. Uh, I like that I'm able to cut my bars in a few hours. So I will um be going live again in a few hours. So if you want to actually see me cut them. So around 10 o'clock my time should be about the four hour mark. And I think these will be ready to cut by then. So I had to move the pot because I'm left-handed. I'm sorry, not left-handed, because I'm right-handed. <laughs> um, I really love this green. I really hope the green stays that way. I don't expect it to. I know it's probably going to morph a little bit. Um, but wow, what a very, very nice screen. I'm very impressed with it. And I really like with, you know, private label soaps, I'm able to play around with different fragrance oils and different colors and all sorts of, you know, th things that I can't really use in my range because they're synthetic. So it's really, it gives me a creative outlet. 
um, when I make private label soaps and I'm able to satisfy my soaping urges <laughs> because you know, I, I am a soap addict after all, as I'm sure everyone watching this is in their own right. Um, so it's really nice to play around with fragrance oils and colors and of course palm oil as well. I don't use palm oil in my range, um, but you know, for private label soaps, sure, why not? I can go all out and the sky's the limit. Of course, I do spill. And I know Cass said that I'm a very neat soap maker, but I actually edit a lot of my messiness out. The green is stunning. Yeah, I know, isn't it? It's beautiful. So I'm not going to really do anything fancy in terms of texture. I don't know if it's ready to texture. Yeah, I'll just... It's just more testing, you know. It's actually behaved quite well. I could have actually split it off. I'll know if I next time I'll do a I'll do a split, two or three color split. But of course, this batter is going to move because if there is a steep water discount and um, there's sixty percent hard oils in there, so I know it's definitely going to um, trace faster than usual. But it's still behaved. I could have. He is down on the blending with a stick blender and um, it would have been totally fine to split it off and make multiple colors. So I'll know for next one. The chime would be worried because I know with other chais from other suppliers, I've got these both from Aussie Candle Suppliers, um, that they accelerate. So <laughs> we shall see how this one behaves. So same drill, I have the clay, the mica, and the titanium dioxide in here. Give it a good stir. I won't be using that. Um, I'll get a fresh one, stick blender, just so there's no color mixing. Wow, this is nice. This is the first time, I'm pretty sure this is the first time I've used this Michael. Very nice. So I'll just give it a nice whisk. Wow, that looks great, doesn't it? You are super neat. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm on my best behavior now. If I had to split off, um, if, if I was working with a slab and I, you know, with, as you see with my other soap videos, if I was working with a slab um, and splitting off in, you know, two or three colors, I would make a mess. Like, it's just, I, I generally edit that when I spill and I clean up with paper towel, I edit that out in my videos. But I guess the reason why I was a little nervous today, because I know there's no chance of editing. <laughs> So what you see today is literally what you get. So if I make a fool of myself, well, I make a fool of myself. Um, and I guess we can laugh together, so that's fine. Love the look of Mike and mixed with all so pretty. Yeah, very nice, very nice. I know if it was like a white, if it was a white bar, I know that these colors will come out. I hope that stays green and I hope that stays that color too because it was actually really nice. So I'm hoping that this resembles chai latte. So we shall see. I pre-made my live solution at midday today, so it's nice and cool. And a um, funny, funny story about um, Cass, come back Arabella. I have a really, really good friend in Victoria in Melbourne and um, We've been friends for almost 10 years now, and she's got a daughter, her name's Tiff, and through a post on Facebook, I was commenting on my friend's daughter's Tiff's Facebook post, and we're laughing, had a good laugh, and me and Cass started like talking about soap, because soap came up in the, the post, and turns out she really watches me on YouTube, and she knows friends online that I've known for a decade. So it's just crazy how YouTube makes the world small. 
So I'm just going to blend, so I won't have to say anything while I'm blending. Truth with the chai latte. Mm, smells beautiful. And also with the fragrance, I always add natural vitamin E to it as well. So same with the green tea, what I just made. I mix vitamin E, natural vitamin E, with the um, essential oils if I use essential oils or fragrance oils. And that's a lot of skin benefits to that, but also it acts as an antioxidant. So um it prevents dots and just extends the shelf life of your bars. So that's just the standard in all uh, my soap making recipes. Yes, it really is a small world. It really, really is. I just was so gobsmacked. Like, all right, so I'm just going to give it a quick blend. <laughs> Seems to be behaving itself. Hang that up. Leave that there. I'm just going to leave all the soaping equipment for tomorrow. I'll let it all harden up and then I'll just rinse them off. Um, that's a good thing about when you make soap. You don't always have to clean them off. You can just leave them and then rinse them the next day in 24 hours and it's soap, it's clean. So it's um, excellent. So I'll just leave all these on the side. And I'll come back to it tomorrow. Usually when I make videos, I wipe them down and then I spray them with vinegar and then I um, put them in my dishwasher. But um, since I'm making a double batch and I'm alive, I thought that's fine. I'll just put them on the side. And that's really nice, isn't it? Does that remind you of chai latte? It actually smells like chai latte. I'm, I'm hoping that the smells actually hold up after cure. So each batch is uh, 1,200 grams of carrier oil. Um, these molds, uh, they can fit 1,400 grams of carrier oil, assuming you use 28% water to oil ratio or below. I usually use 25, but for this recipe, I used um, 27 because of the hard oil percentage, because the 60% hard oil is in here. So I thought I'll just up the water just a little bit, but it's still a very big water discount. Ah, uh, there we go. I spilled a little bit. <laughs> right, so we'll get all these out. I'll just look in a circle. Radio, get it all out as best as I can. I'm actually really liking these colors, really. Really, really nice. Very, very impressed with them. <clears throat> and um, the titanium dioxide, as you see me used before. I use the water dispersible. I got a really um, cool trick from Keely from Soy and Shea. She's located in Brisbane. Um, she makes fantastic soaps, by the way. I've used her soaps. I absolutely love her soaps. Um, I couldn't really find information on the ratios online with titanium dioxide. So she told me if you weigh out 100 grams of titanium dioxide in a bottle like this, when you add 130 grams of distilled water and you shake it. And I've got a marble in there as well to keep everything mixed nice. 
so it doesn't clump together. Um, she said that um, it'll keep for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, I've, I've actually kept them for months and they've been totally fine to use. Um, so that's how I do my titanium dioxide. I know that there's not really a lot of info out there as to how much to use and how much to dilute it, especially in advance. People kind of give information on um, how to dilute what you need before you use it, not like, you know, how it's mixed in there. I can just rip it out and it's totally fine. Right, so there you go. Those are the two. Those are the two soaps. Green tea, beautiful. Mm, very nice. I really hope the color stays. That's why I added the titanium dioxide. I wanted um, to retain as much of the color and chai latte, beautiful. Very mild smell for me now because I still haven't got my smell back, but I can smell them. So I'm hoping that they're actually really nice and fragrant. Thank you very much, Kaz. They do look quite nice and I should really, I'm glad I'm getting off cuts. So I will be definitely trying these to see, um, see how they go actually. Um, looks fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Thanks so much, Lana. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, actually I really, really, it took me a while to figure out how to go live, but I actually really like doing it now. I was really nervous before, but I think I might do it. Like, you know, every now and then, maybe I'll make an effort because I'm always making so outside of the videos, I, I actually film and edit. So maybe I will just, you know, like now, like when I make private label, just maybe I might do more lives in the future and just say, hey, you know, I'm testing this out, I'm trying this out, you know, see how everything, you know, see how it goes so I can continue making it if, you know, if it's well received. And I think I might go jump on lives uh, more often. And this is like my new setup. I know like a lot of viewers know that I changed my setup completely. I bought new equipment. Um, I'm hoping that everything's clear and um, no, and you can hear me properly and the lighting's good. I have a streaming light here as well above. Um, so I hope that everything is great. Great idea, it's nice to see in real time, yeah. I um, actually really like it, yeah. So I was super nervous, but I think it's fine. Um, and I'll cover a point before I jump off. Um, I don't cover any of my soaps, regardless of these ones or essential oils or fragrance oils. And the reason why I don't, because I do use a really big water discount and I find keeping the bars below 50 degrees as they cure, and oh, sorry, as they harden up, um, they retain a lot of its smell. So I find that keeping it below 50 is really beneficial, especially with essential oils. And that's the key into retaining um, essential oils as well by keeping your batter as cool as possible. And I know that these fragrance oils have, um, they, they have flash points of, you know, I think the green tea had a flash point of 90 degrees Celsius, which is more than enough. And the chai latte, I'm pretty sure 70 or 73 degrees, but I still find keeping them below 50 retains the smell. So that's a big reason why I um, don't cover them. And of course, if I covered them, they would overheat and they would crack because I use such a big water discount as well. So I just leave it like that and I come back. I check on, check on it in about three hours. And of course, ambient temperature plays a big role in it. And um, I'll just, you know, move the the mold and just see if, I, if it's ready. Sometimes they're ready in three hours, sometimes three and a half hours, sometimes four hours. The fragrance all depends on that it's going to be ready as well. Um, so Lana said everything was good. Excellent. Great. I'm very happy to hear that. Right, so I think I'm going to stop unless anyone wants to ask me something or they want to say something or anything like that. I'm going to um, stop it here and I will continue this in about three to four hours uh, when they're ready to cut and you'll see me do that live as well. Right, so thanks everybody for 
tuning in. This video will be available as well to view later if anyone missed it, because I know people were saying that they might not make the 6.30. Um, so it was just totally fine. Um, right, I better take my glove off because the trackpad won't work with the glove. Right, so thanks once again, and I guess I'll see you soon. Bye for now.